Thanks for joining us. Special live coverage here on GBH Radio 89.7 and across our social media platforms, whether you're with us on Facebook Live, YouTube, or Instagram, or Twitter for that matter. We welcome you as we cut through the issues and get to some news here tonight, including the environment. And we will bury the fossil fuel industry and their asthma creating, their greenhouse gas creating uh, uh, dangers to our planet in a generation. But of course, uh, because the, uh, the fossil fuel industry uh, has the United States Senate as a wholly owned subsidiary because it has Donald Trump and Mr. O'Connor is a Donald Trump Republican. He says he's going to vote for him uh, as a wholly owned subsidiary. We can do nothing on this issue. Senator Ed Markey speaking to our moderators on the debate stage this evening on GBH. You heard it and saw it live as it happened. Of course, his Republican challenger, Kevin O'Connor, does not support the Green New Deal. And I will be a pro-environment senator and, and because I, like all of us, have children. I have four kids. I'm worried about the future. I'm deeply concerned. But, but Senator Markey's Green New Deal, that extreme program, is nothing but posturing. There is no future for, for the United States of America to a carbon neutral path with a, with, with a successful growing economy without fossil fuel. There's no future for America in any way without fossil fuel. Kevin O'Connor speaking a short time ago on uh, climate change, specifically the Green New Deal, which, of course, Senator Ed Markey co-authored. It's a big reason why he won the primary. And we're joined now in our special coverage by Mindy Todd, the managing director of our Cape Cod Bureau and our sister station on the Cape CAI, along with Carrie Saldo, GBH News Worcester Bureau Chief, who's moderated quite a few debates on her own. Good evening and welcome to both of you. We're glad to have you here. Thanks for having us. Yeah. I want you to take us out of the Boston bubble. That's my hope for <laughs> you guys this evening. Mindy, Cape Cod is one of the most politically misunderstood regions in the country. I think uh, we can agree with a well-known progressive community focused on climate change, focused on the environment, among other right. issues, of course, but also a reliable Hi. conservative base uh, in the middle of the Cape. That's fertile ground, Cape Cod, for yeah. both candidates. It, it, for sure. And I think a lot of people don't realize, um, you know, when you look at our legis our delegates to the legislature, they're, they're mixed and they have been yeah. for a long time. We're sort of kind of 50-50 between Democrats and Republicans. Um, and I I was really kind of curious uh, to hear what Kevin O'Connor would have to, uh, to say this evening. And I think um, the first segment summed it up pretty much. He, I feel like he did miss an opportunity when Marjorie asked that question specifically about the Cape and, and you know, the environment. Um, I was like, oh, great. Uh, and at first he didn't answer the question. And then, you know, he really just criticized Marky. We, we didn't really get to hear any, um, you know, real positions and where he stands. I mean, he, I, he did say that, um, you know, he would look for a moderate but sustainable uh, solutions. But I feel like he did miss an opportunity in letting us know who he is and, and what he stands for. I thought that was true for most of the debate. He continually was more criticizing of what Marky would do rather than what he would do. And I, I really was looking forward to hearing a little bit more substance from what his position would be. So arguably, Mindy, more detail would have made exactly. more news on Cape Cod tomorrow morning. I think so, yes. Carrie Saldo, uh, you're no stranger to the debate stage. It's great to have you here, by the way, and welcome to GBH News. If I could say this formally, as you cut the ribbon on our Worcester Bureau a couple of months ago, we've, of course, never been in the same building because of the age we're in. But we're delighted that you're here and you're bringing a, a slightly different perspective as well. When we when we think about Worcester, uh, nearby towns like Shrewsbury uh, that have a pronounced Republican base, some people call it Charlie Baker country is is that going to play well for Kevin O'Connor on a night like tonight? I think that it might. If we look at the 2016 election and where people fell in central Massachusetts when it came to voting for President Trump, 40 or 41 communities in central Massachusetts supported President Trump. So tonight when we heard Markey jabbing Kevin O'Connor on, he's a Trump Republican, he's a Trump Republican, I don't think that th that could play well for O'Connor in some of those communities. Now, that's not to say that Worcester and Worcester County doesn't have a lot of true blue support. It certainly does. We're in Massachusetts. That's no surprise. But for all the discussion that we had between Soraya and Adam and Peter about the failure for O'Connor to choose a lane and how that might make it hard for him on the GOP highway between Trump 
and uh, Baker, I think it could be helpful in Worcester, in the Worcester community. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a lot to go through there, Carrie, and we can maybe pick through uh, some issues beyond the climate as we already talked about. How about health care? Uh, Medicare for all has been a big uh, issue for Ed Markey. It's one that has resonated among progressives in Massachusetts, and it got a lot of talk on the primary trail. Uh, we have a pretty good sense of where Ed Markey is, as we did hear him uh, get to this. Medicare for all uh, is the way in which ultimately we have to go. Yeah, step one is let's protect the Affordable Care Act from being eviscerated by Donald Trump and by uh, people like Mr. O'Connor. But then let us make the transition uh, to a point where everyone in our country uh, is able to access the health care which they need for their families. This uh, led to a conversation about pre-existing conditions. It's something that President Trump likes to tweet about, but has not uh, put forth a plan about. Uh, and Kevin O'Connor was asked about that. Well. It will be a priority for me as a senator. Uh, President Trump has been very good in terms of fighting for prescription drug price reductions, uh, and 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 also for greater transparency in terms. What of has he done on pre-existing conditions? Except say he supports them at the same time that his Department of Justice is part of a lawsuit to eliminate them. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't agree with the pursuit of that lawsuit. I think it's all advised. So back to the Trump Republican idea. I'd love to hear from both Mindy and Carrie here. That doesn't sound like when Mindy. Sorry, I lost you right there at the end, Joe. Go ahead, Mindy. Well when when we start talking about a Trump Republican, that did not sound like one there, did it? When it comes to pre existing conditions, health care reform, he may not support the Affordable Care Act, but he's also not talking like Donald Trump when it comes to health care. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And I think, um, you know, that was sort of one of the, you know, where, where they was, where they were saying, Marky was saying he's a Trump Republican. There were several things that were brought up in the first segment that didn't sound, make him sound much like a Trump Republican. You know, they like say more like a Baker Republican. I think that was part of uh, an issue this evening for him was um, what kind of, and he gets, as, as Saray was saying, he gets asked a lot, what kind of Republican are you? Yeah. I'm not 100% sure we're, we were made clear with, with his answers this evening. Well, he likes to say I'm both, Kerry, uh, or he says, I'm sorry, he likes to say I am my own Republican. I am a Kevin O'Connor Republican. I, I am not a Trump or, or a Charlie Baker Republican. Does it matter uh, in central Massachusetts? How popular is Donald Trump right now versus Charlie Baker said to be the most popular governor in the country? That Can't is do much worse than siding with that. Yeah, that's exactly a discussion I was having. Much better, I should say. Uh, with one of my editors today, you know, is the red more Baker red now that here we are yeah. uh, facing this presidential election, or is it more Trump as we're facing the presidential election, I should say. I want to go back to healthcare for just a half a second. You know, we heard we heard um, issues of asthma raised by Senator Markey. Mm. Uh, that's a huge issue. If I go further west into Western Massachusetts for people in Springfield, uh, so certainly people are going to be, you know, paying a little more attention in Springfield when they hear that issue come up. But COVID is a huge issue for people in Worcester right now. They've been in the red zone for weeks. And so when, when at the beginning of the debate, when we heard people, when we heard both candidates talking about where they are on COVID, I certainly would get into a guess that people in Worcester were paying very, very keen attention to, to that exchange. I want to bring up some of the polls that we have been running uh, virtually and kind of in the background of our conversation now with uh, a lot of people who have joined us in our virtual uh, Zoom studio here. And it begins with a question, pretty simple. Do you feel you'll learn more tonight about each candidate's position? I'm glad to say 81% said yes. Of course, that's why you're here. 13 said no. Six are unsure. And I don't know what they were watching necessarily, but how would you describe media coverage? This is a good one of the 2020 Senate race non-existent or lacking. 7% said non-existent. 51% said lacking. Uh, Mindy, Todd, you've been working in the news business for a while. Are, are, are we at the point in Massachusetts where we don't cover certain races because we think they're predetermined? This is the yeah, only know, debate. Yeah. You know, th that's, that's, there's the key right there. This is the only debate. I think I've seen, you know, we've been hosting debates as long as I've been doing my show the last 19 years. Uh, we always do, you know, the, the, the state Senate and, and, you know, representatives and what have you. I don't think there's enough opportunity for the candidates to debate as much as there used to be. Um, and 
you know, some of the newspapers, uh, you know, don't do the interviews that they used to do with the candidates, kind of mm -hmm. striking up the differences. I certainly feel like yeah, the candidates, I don't feel they do get as much media coverage. I would say in-depth media coverage as they once did. Certainly there are some news outlets that do a better job of it, of it than others. But yeah, I, I think that uh, that's absolutely true. This is why we're here, uh, Carrie Saldo. We also asked, have you found it difficult to access information on the candidates regarding the Senate race? 32% said yes. That always kills me. There's something called Google. There, there's a thing called the internet. If people want to learn, they could access this information. It's a lot easier than it used to be, Carrie. Well, it depends on how uh, how quickly or how easily you want to be spoon fed, I suppose, Joe. I mean, if you're not <laughs> real big on using the old fingers to hit the Google, then that's going to be a problem for those folks or, or Twitter or Facebook, or can we yeah. just go through the, the possibilities for folks out there? But you know, it's, it's a real issue. I was talking to people today, a range of people, whether it's everyday voters, political consultants, or elected officials here uh, in central and even Western Massachusetts. And a couple of them did admit, hey, look, I live and breathe this. And I was a little, uh, I sort of forgot that there was a, a debate tonight. Now, certainly it'll be all over the place tomorrow. So maybe that'll increase visibility for folks if they wanted to do something else with their time in the form of maybe football this evening probably not mm -hmm. right there joe i can't imagine why you'd want to do that it's not even a real game with us cam newton uh, I'll tell you what, though, we have a couple of other uh, poll questions that we're going to let run for a little bit of time here, including the biggest factor in your vote and whether you think President Trump's hospitalization will affect the outcome of the 2020 vote. And we'll share results from those two polls uh, coming up toward uh, the end of the broadcast. I'd love to hear from uh, each of you one more time before we wrap up. Mindy, Todd, uh, what makes news tomorrow morning in this race? With a month left and so much happening in the world right now, do these candidates break through with a headline? You know, um, I was thinking about that, thinking specifically for my region. I think, you know, the COVID stuff obviously is on everybody's mm -hmm. minds, but um from my particular re region and some of the issues I was hoping to hear, I, we did not hear tonight. So I was a little disappointed about that, but um, I think- What were they? Well, I think for one thing, you know, for us, you know, the, the infrastructure, I mean, the, the broadband, high-speed broadband, the bridges, um, you know, the, the, our roads, which is really a statewide problem. It's not just the region. Um, also, you know, water, all, we're all about water. You know, the, the Marjorie touched on it, you know, where she talked about the kettle ponds, but, you know, our wastewater infrastructure, which is approaching what, uh, you know, three point something billion dollars and growing all the time. Um, those are big issues for us that um, I think I would have loved to have heard a little more about. I know that broadband issue is a big one, uh, Carrie. The yeah. further you go west as well, it's one of these kind of uh, deals on the extremes of our state. What resonates in Worcester and uh, Shrewsbury, as I mentioned, maybe even Springfield, Carrie, you know that neck of the woods so well after hearing what you did about mask wearing, about protocols, and even about the environment tonight. Yeah, I think that the internet issue was quick that Marky touched on it, but that's a huge one as you just pointed out for Worcester yeah. currently right now, taking a look at whether or not municipal broadband might help them uh, close that digital divide. In parts of the Berkshires, there are still communities, believe it or not, in 2020 that do not have internet access. And the state's been working on this since the Deval Patrick administration. <laughs> it was a promise that his folks made way back when. Uh, so I certainly think that it was a quick mention tonight, but it could uh, pull some headlines. Short of that, it was a contentious, contentious Democratic primary out here oh. in Western and Central Massachusetts, where we saw people go for Kennedy, even though Markey won the day, we know that. Uh, and I heard from several sources today that while we they feel like the, the seat's going to stay blue, they've moved on, they're making phone calls in other states to help Joe Biden take the presidential win. How about that? They've already moved on. It was about mm. the primary, wasn't it, in that case? I know you've got a new ball yard. Uh, I saw a picture of it today in Worcester, Carry. So I appreciate your making time for us uh, for our debate tonight. In all seriousness, honored to have Carrie Saldo from our Worcester Bureau and Mindy Todd from our sister station on Cape Cod CAI. Thanks for bringing your insights to the program this evening. Thanks for having me.